Well, anyone who's um, read any science fiction books or seen any science fiction movies knows that our galaxy is filled with stars and every star has got planets going around it and uh, those planets are mostly inhabited by aliens who are all doing their kind of alien stuff and um, doing things based on their own motivations and stuff, things like that. But the, the thing I always find difficult to understand is that um, most of them seem to just look like ordinary humans but wearing a kind of rubber mask or something, you know. Never quite understood that. But anyway, as it is, science fiction is one thing but then there's scientific research and uh, many people have actually done um, research looking for evidence of aliens. So there was a program called SETI that many of you may have heard of um, that's kind of expanded and there are lots of uh, breakout projects that have happened. So many people have done scientific studies and really what they look for, or what they're looking for is techno signatures. So what's a techno signature? So this is, this is um, a measurement from outer space of something that we can only uh, believe has been created by um, an advanced technological civilization. Something that we would recognize as being in intelligent aliens. So the most obvious techno signature is a radio signal. So this, this, this may be uh, uh, broadcast TV or broadcast radio or um, the alien equivalent of um, mobile phone traffic or uh, Wi-Fi traffic, that kind of thing. So um, we we can pick up very, very faint radio signals using our best uh, radio telescopes uh, here on Earth. So there are a lot of people who have been working out, looking at you, you using our best radio telescopes to see if there's um, radio techno signatures. Another, another type of techno signature that's very popular among the sci-fi crowd really is the Dyson Sphere. And now this is the, this is the concept that um, very advanced uh, aliens who got, who got access to very good technology may one day have built a, a sphere of solar panels completely surrounding their star in their solar system. And they use this basically to solve all of their energy problems or maybe because it's cheaper than building nuclear power stations, I don't know. But uh, for whatever reason, if they built those things, again, back on Earth here, we would be able to detect them because we can, we can look at um, the radiation from stars and by studying the spectra, you know, a, a, a star that's got a Dyson sphere around it is going to be deficient in light and uh, blue light and that kind of stuff. And it's going to have an excess of infrared radiation. So using using tools and equipment that we've already got, we've already got here on Earth, we can detect those kind of things if we, uh, if we look for them. Now, the only problem is that many, many years of work and many hours of research and observations looking for techno signatures has yielded uh, zero detections. There are no detections and not even any credible, credible candidates. So the best the scientists can do is say, well, no, we have not found any evidence for alien, um, advanced alien life. Now, I want to give you an explanation of why humans will never find evidence of advanced alien life. Right? Now there's two basic um, theories I suppose. The first theory is a very kind of scientific one that's based on, um, based on astronomy and it goes a little bit like this which is that the, the earth which is the only place we know that has advanced um, technologically capable life. The Earth was formed about four billion years ago. The evidence is that the life, uh, living organisms formed on the Earth very soon after the planet was kind of consolidated uh, as a rocky planet. 
Uh, but it's taken four billion years, the entire lifetime of the planet, basically, to yield um, intelligent, technologically capable uh, species, and that's us, right? So, so we know what it is. It's us, right? I mean, what could be more intelligent than than people sitting around on Tuesday night in the pub talking about physics? You know, so that's the almost the very definition of intelligent life um, uh, that we would recognise. So, the next problem is that the universe itself is only thirteen point eight billion years old so if it took four billion years to create one civilization the universe itself is only 13.8 billion years so how many of those stellar systems out there do you think it really is likely that they've actually developed um intelligent life that's capable of advanced technology that can produce techno signatures that we would recognize and the answer is not very many so um, that's the scientific um, f approach you know so um, are you convinced do you find that convincing the idea that um, the universe isn't really old enough to have produced very many civilizations right so it's it's a good argument I personally don't find it overwhelmingly uh, convincing but I've got a second argument, and the second argument is the what's called the dark forest theory. Now, the idea with the dark forest theory uh, is um, uh, goes along a little, goes a little, bit, a little bit like this. So, if you, I want you to cast your mind back and imagine that you're in the Middle Ages, in the 1500s, and that you're a member of the Mayan civilization living in the jungle in Central America, okay? And you're in equilibrium with your environment. Your level of technology is perfectly uh, what you need to feed yourself and to feed your family. Um, you've got a belief system that matches everything you see around you. Everything is great, okay? And then one day, you're going off out to get your breakfast, whatever, down at the beach uh, and you see aliens like these weird sort of humanoids walking around and they're they're kind of wearing strange clothing and um, behind them they've got these gigantic uh, ships you know that you've never seen before and uh, they're kind of using this alien technology and kind of holding things up to their eyes, looking around and stuff. And they, they're, they're speaking a strange alien language, right? So so you've, you've just come down and you've met these people, right? So what are you going to do? What is your approach to these people? So um, they may be friendly, they may be unfriendly, you don't know. And you've got no way of knowing what their motivation is, these aliens who have just appeared in, in your universe, right? Uh, so, on the one hand, perhaps they're friendly aliens who are going to come down and um, give you lots of new medicines and uh, education and give you new technology and that kind of stuff, right? On the other hand, they might be bad aliens. They might be coming down here to use their alien technology to enslave you and, um, I don't know, maybe they're going to take you away and use you as um, an energy source in their alien supercomputers or something like that. I, who knows? Nobody knows. So, logically, the best course of action for you to pursue as a middle age Middle Ages um, Central American is to go back to your village and uh, get all of your people and your warriors and all this good stuff using your best technology, your blowpipes and your uh, poison uh, poison darts made from the from the glands on the poison arrow frog, this kind of stuff, and come down to the beach, get the aliens, and basically kill them all. And that is the most logical way of uh, progressing that's going to guarantee your survival as a society and as a species, right? So um, anything else could lead to your takeover. And uh, 
destruction of your civilization. Now, taking this back now to another a, a different sphere. So we're now going to talk about the global or the the, the, the um, aliens out in the universe. Now, of course, if there were aliens out there, they've been existing for hundreds, thousands, or potentially millions of years, right? So they all understand the dark forest theory. They know about the dark forest theory, and they know that if they reveal themselves to the wider universe, they're at risk of um, invasion or attack from a more advanced civilization who's coming there to rub them out. So any, any civilization that's actually out there in the universe is going to keep themselves uh, hidden, keep themselves quiet, right? So um, that is the second, to me, the most compelling argument why we would never see signals uh, from aliens uh, from outer space. Now, if we ever did see signals, uh, we're in trouble because that basically means they've arrived here and they're going to um, rub us out and they're going to uh, kill us all uh, before we can get them, right? So uh, that is, that's the end of my argument, basically. Th there are no... Uh, we will never see signals from alien, alien uh, civilizations either because they don't exist, because the timeline is wrong, or if they do exist, it's because they understand the dark forest theory and they need to keep themselves hidden. And uh, if we ever do, actually did encounter aliens, it means they've come close and they've come here to get us and do us in before we can do them. So uh, that's my argument. Um, I'm perfectly open to contra arguments and if you have a different idea if you want to kind of rebut my concepts or if you've got a better solution uh, let me know in the comments of course i'll be more than happy to uh, to find out about that and to listen to your opinions thank you very much bye